Hi friends. So today we are in the fourth week of our course on risk based engineering. And um, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. Uh, this course is coming to you uh, as part of a national program on technology enhancement learning NPTEL. Um, uh, I would say uh, we have covered the fundamentals of uh, uh, risk assessment so far and of course uh, risk characterization also. Uh, and now uh, we are into, uh, we have also done probabilistic modeling uh, for risk assessment. And now in this week, uh, we are going to cover the system reliability modeling, uh, wherein we will learn the tools which are required uh, for uh, risk modeling. Um, so let us go into our uh, outline, what we are going to study here. Uh, first of all, I'll give you uh, background and overview of uh, 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 this uh, particular case that is uh, our uh, system reliability modeling and then uh, system for the purpose of risk-based engineering. Um, we will we will devote some time on this and then finally we'll come to our uh, the topic that is reliability block diagram uh, that is uh, and there we will see uh, uh, series configuration, parallel configuration and mixed configuration. Of course, K out of N is also a part of it but it is not exactly part of reliability block diagram. And then we have this Markov model and fault tree analysis and event tree analysis. So during this uh, five lectures, we will cover this, uh, this syllabus, okay. Uh, now, if I go to, uh, let us dwell into uh, what, what, what we mean by system, especially for the purpose of uh, uh, risk and reliability modeling, or, or I would say uh, risk-based engineering. Uh, we define system as a group of hardware, uh, hardware, software, human, or societal, or I, I can say organizational uh, aspects, uh, set of ideas or rules uh, when we work in a coordinated manner uh, and organize way to achieve identified function or objective goal, uh, objective or goal. So this is how we define a system. Then what we say is the system has a boundary. Uh, in engineering, whenever we take up any system uh, to to limit the, our analysis uh, to the to uh, to the area that we want to investigate, we always define the boundary. So system has a boundary. And uh, then it, uh, the same uh, system or subsystem is interacting with the other components also. So we have a linkages there, you know, uh, how the information is coming in, going out, uh, like that. And then we have a very important component, uh, the collection of system along the uh, organizational and hierarchy with the design function and resources work together makes an engineering plant. So when when uh, 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 now we are talking one high, uh, one higher level, that is, the plants are built based on uh, considering some systems, uh, and then the system will have subsystem, and subsystems will have a component. In short, we are going to see in the next slide how we are uh, hierarchy manner we are defining these things. Then um, system generally has a hierarchy also you know, in terms of its operation, design, maintenance, you know, and the information uh, flows uh, from top to bottom and bottom to top. So you know, there is a transparent communication occurs in iter iterative manner uh, in the system. Then collection of components which are functionally interconnected uh, to fulfill the design uh, the, and that in turn they are connected among themselves or to the outside also. Each component has hardware and in many cases software. This is an, uh, in recent 20, 30 years. Now we are seeing, uh, especially for uh, like the case of digital system, uh, we don't have only hardware, but we have software also. So there is always a software component. And if I talk of today's technology, there is a case of having an AI, uh, AI tool uh, working uh, on our system. So. Uh, that's how system we, we uh, talk about it. The examples are for the digital system, digital electronic card or uh, control logic or even the AI system also. So uh, having said this, let us try to see graphically how, uh, how uh, we placed our plant, then how we have uh, 
um, since we are talking about the risk based engineering, uh, we have to divide the plant into two major parts that is process systems and safety system. Process systems are the one who should operate reliably, reliability, uh, reliably to ensure the throughput and targets. Okay? And safety systems, they remain uh, standby or dormant till they are called, uh, called on due to failure in the process system or any external event or internal event. Okay? And then uh, the middle component is a management system. The engineering plant uh, uh, have management and control system. So you can say an engineering plant essentially comprised of um, process system, safety system, and management and control system. Because um, for mega plants, the, uh, the, all the information comes to control room, and from there only the, the plants are controlled. And that is where the human factor as part of the management gets into the uh, engineering plant. So these are the three basic features. Now, if you look at the process system, the process system might have subsystems. So uh, n the process system, so n p subsystems. I am giving this number because uh, we can get uh, some get some idea about how many subsystems are involved, how many uh, components are involved. Uh, you know, so like so n the process system is there, then n p subsystems because process systems comprise of so many subsystems, and subsystems again comprise of many components, and uh, then each component is comprised of many parts. So it is actually logically we are talking about ki how many parts that we have to take care of when we operate design a plant actually. Okay, then similar uh, uh, similar explanation is there for uh, safety system also. Uh, we have sa a number of safety system S, then we have SP subsystems, and then SPC that is the number of components uh, that are supporting the uh, safety systems, and then fi finally number of safety related parts. Okay. And uh, in between, we have management system. In management system, there are uh, there are uh, 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 documentation is uh, uh, one thing, and organizational setup. And then there are many uh, sub modules or subsections here. Something like design section, then training section, and uh, you know uh, modification se section then uh, planning section, design section. So uh, in short, we say an engineering plant means the hardware and software, and then we have a human factor involved in, uh, uh, in operating plant or a, uh, uh, designed uh, going on for a uh, plant. So now having understood uh, what is the engineering plant, now let us come to the topic. Our first module was reliability block diagram. This is a very elegant approach uh, wherein the system configuration and the block arrangement are to a great extent match and that's why it is easier to visualize how the components are interacting among themselves, uh, where the input and outputs are there. So uh, the, the fundamental element of a reliability block diagram is basically a block. You can see on the uh, uh, right side uh, there is a uh, the block shown here. And the uh, reliability block that is now we'll call reliability block diagram RDB. Uh, we'll use an abbreviation. Is a popular approach for system reliability modeling. When we have a small system and we want to understand uh, its performance, failure mechanism, and all that, it is better. And uh, suppose if it remains limited to card level or component, component level only, uh, electronic card or component level only, then a reliability block, a block diagram approach are few components interacting among the, themselves. So then uh, this approach is very elegant and very effective. Uh, uh, typically, a reliability block diagram has one input that is coming from either the other system or it is a basically input element and the output. Uh, 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 element. So that means input and output arrows are there which shows the input and the output of the reliability block diagram. And then in between there are linkages which connect one block to the another block. So this block and the linkages they make the uh, reliability block diagram. It is easier, easier to understand reliability block diagram because its topology is sim similar to how components are placed, hardware or software components are placed, you know, uh, in a chronological order or in parallel configuration. 
then it provides a effective representation of the dependency like if it is a series model um, the performance of the system depends on all the blocks if one block interrupts the the system or the the rdb uh, shows that the system will fail actually okay uh, redundancy and common cause failure uh, is a critical parameter here because uh, we represent in reliability block diagram as i said series as well as parallel systems so there are way to represent parallel system also we'll discuss uh, in our next slide um, and i'll touch upon uh, this please remember common cause failure this is a very important uh, parameter uh, the meaning of uh, the analysis might change with with or without the uh, common cause consideration and also human factor takes the lead when common cause failure happens because of uh, human uh, human uh, error or human factor so uh, uh, the data basically is a input to the reliability block diagram and these data are nothing but failure data or reliability data uh, either we uh, deal in failure domain or reliability domain identification of failure mode is important when we draw a reliability block diagram okay uh, now um, as we said um, generally rdb may not be adequate for complex system like suppose if i have to model a industrial system or a process uh, system uh, where uh, there are uh, you can say thousands of components are there uh, for design and operation so uh, there uh, it becomes a tricky uh, so there are other methods uh, which provide effective solution like fault tree event tree and uh, um, you know so uh, so normally those modelings are done by mega plants uh, uh, using uh, reliability and all that uh, you can see block is uh, uh, is shown here block could be a wall and if i am analyzing let us say a wall along then the block could be the hardware uh, wall component then it could be a motor it could be a control supply so uh, so uh, in reliability block diagram or for that matter any reliability analysis uh, approach uh, defining a, comp a component boundary that tells the scope of our work and say, same thing is true for, for reliability block diagram also uh, we have pump now here i have shown only a pump uh, i have not shown the uh, prime mover that is motor uh, whether it is a hydraulic turbine or anything so it is a pump only uh, i considered is a block similarly for electrical breakers i have taken electrical that means i am focusing on what happens inside a breaker okay and what are the, uh, what is the input and output of this breaker and that also is limited by what is the termination point so that the arrow will decide uh, what are in and what are out uh, in terms of uh, this uh, electrical breaker so having uh, seen uh, and having a pretty understanding of uh, the block now uh, let us go to the uh, how we draw reliability block, block diagram the process as i shown on top by arrow it is from left to right okay uh, that means in i would say in chronological order how the components are placed we proceed and i have shown here three configuration series configuration parallel configuration and mixed configuration you know so a system becomes more and more complex number of blocks are also increasing their connections are increasing then we have to go for mixed configuration but that is a limit when we have to go for other methods actually okay so now uh, the uh, the series uh, configuration you can see there is a input arrow okay so and then uh, there is a block there is a there is a block here block 1 block 2 and the output is there okay and the output is nothing but the success or failure of the system and input is also what is going on into the uh, block uh, and what is coming out from the block so the results in input data output results that you get on the system so series con parallel configuration is what if we want to increase the reliability of the uh, function let us say then Uh, one block failure you can see one block failure in series system uh, it blocks the path so it, the system fails but if we want to increase the reliability or availability of the system then we put two blocks in pa parallel that means if one 
block or one component let's say pump fails then the other pump can meet the function okay and for the function failure we need failure of uh, both the uh, both the uh, redundant components similarly here this crossbar it is uh, it has to be analyzed to tell how the system fails actually so this is a generic uh, uh, for understanding purpose we have seen the series and parallel configuration now we'll see uh, uh, modeling for a simple series system now series system consider there are uh, there is a fire we'll take example of fire uh, injection system fire water injection system uh, it could be applicable to housing it could be applicable for industry but fire water uh, the fire events they become uh, more, uh, very important uh, and they have a lot of safety significance in plant designs you know so so uh, in series system when we say just now i mentioned uh, single component failure uh, connected in series configuration disrupts the flow and uh, result into system failure okay um, now here in fire water system our objective is injection of water if it is demanded the water should be available for dousing the fire okay and for that that time this system should work so its uh, uh, success criteria is, is availability of the uh, injection of fire water when the fire event occurs so here operational objective line uh, is uh, remain that uh, suppose uh, this is injection of water but suppose if the objective if it is not a fire water line it is a let us say domestic water line the same wall which are connected there are two walls connected in series they become in parallel configuration because we want to isolate when leakage occurs that we will see separately but at present let us see fire water system only uh, so a series configuration was proposed for fire water system uh, of, of a given uh, capacity and pumping system we will see the uh, their uh, component arrangement in the ne next slide to ensure the con continuous availability of fire water a system pressure is required because you know fire system success will occur not only opening of the wall but there are so many other requirement water should be available in the tank then sufficient pressure should be there so whether that is forming scope of our work that we will see in the next slide okay so this is a fire water system uh, complete there are two pumps and there are two walls and power supply and control logic has to be there for uh, walls uh, power supply so logic because it is a motor operated wall we have motor operated wall a and motor operated wall b and then uh, you can see here we have we are indicating system boundary this is a very important thing what we are saying directly indirectly is we are focusing on modeling of reliability of the wall a and wall b we are not even considering control and power logic we are not considering even pump side what uh, when we do an integration the pump side things will be available but for the purpose of this course we will we'll consider only these two walls which are connected in series and uh, what happens and what how we, we should estimate the reliability of these walls so um, uh, pipe sections you can see somebody can question the pipe sections are also there in the reliability block diagram so the analyst does uh, because the experience suggests okay, normally the piping failure events are less frequent or uh, the analysis is not required a, a, a informed decision has been taken so we put an assumption we only these two even in the boundary only these two walls are considered uh, and not even interconnecting pipings okay and further uh, we will see the common cause failure uh, with common cause and without common cause how the because you know um, there is very important i give from this reliability block diagram some reliability value or some failure probability and to my uh, 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 understanding it will be very optimistic thing and in fact in any analysis um, the philosophy is if you give little conservative value it's okay but optimistic values uh, are simply no no actually because that that might uh, create lot of confusion injection pump also have not uh, so uh, now we see that even we are saying saying this part also we have neglected okay now our analysis is confining on only um, modeling is confining on these two walls 
Now let us see, um, it is a series system, motor operator wall A and B. If I convert, I, if I convert this particular configuration, this configuration into reliability block diagram, it is simply block A, V1 and block V2. So this is, you are seeing RDB, a simple uh, representation of this uh, wall system. Okay. Um, so, uh, and as I said, we are not considering here piping failure and all that and input out, uh, pipeline outlet that we are not considering here. So, it is a reliability block diagram, okay. Now, um, here our failure criteria is injection. So, um, these two walls are required to open. Please remember this. These two walls are required to open. Even if one wall fails, then our system fails. So that means reliable operation of wall V1 and V2 is required. And let us see how we convert them into mathematical parameter. Okay. Let us say system criteria is simultaneous opening, opening of wall V1 and V2 as I mentioned on demand and inject water. And remain in open position. This is another important wall opens and should remain in open position. At present we will consider that a wall has opened and it remains open. This other mode that is remain in position is another failure mode that we have not considered here. So that's why for any reliability modeling, the failure mode and what we are excluding, this should be documented because if, uh, if it is uh, subjected to review or some independent uh, peer analysis, then probably those fact and figures should come out very clear. So system failure criteria is failure to open any one of the two wall, one or two and not meeting system mission. So to inject water by opening and remaining the position open for this. So uh, our success criteria is uh, for R1, R2 is failure to open. So that means both should open, okay. It should be two walls. Uh, any one of the two wall opening will, will be a failure. So both the walls should open. R1 is reliability, R1 T is the reliability of wall V1 and R2 T is the reliability of wall V2. So since both are connected in series, reliable operation of 1 and reliable operation of 2 will give us system reliability and that is what the equation is we have here. So system reliability, if I consider exponential distribution, then the, uh, then the block indicates that uh, e raised to power lemma minus lambda 1t multiplied by uh, exponential minus lambda 2t and this will give us uh, the system reliability. Let us see how we operate so and how uh, lambda values uh, uh, makes the whole difference in estimating the reliability. So rst is equal to now uh, exponential terms, it is a mathematics actually, exponential terms when they uh, when they multiply like exponential minus a, uh, minus a and exponential to minus b if they are then their exponent gets added up you know so here lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to lambda system that is system failure rate so now the equation becomes for uh, series system that is reliability for series system is equal to uh, exponential minus lambda st Lambda s is the system failure probability of a series system uh, where uh, it is having two walls actually. Now, uh, just for the uh, sake of understanding, let us take a sim simple numerical example. Okay? So, system reliability is nothing but, so let us say we are given a failure rate of, uh, failure rate of 2 into 10 to the power, uh, 4 into 10 to the power minus 4, that is failure rate of because we have said both the, here we are assuming failure rate of both the walls are same that is 4 into 10 to minus 4 because we have to, in our database also we have taken the failure value of both the walls and finally we have given a uh, uh, individual wall failure rate that is 4 into 10 to minus 4. So here if they get multiplied it, the value becomes 2 into exponential 2 into 10 to power minus 4 that is writing 4 into 10 to minus 4 plus 4 into 10 to minus 4 okay and the mission is uh, 10 hours okay for 10 hours it should the path should be available okay so you get my point nine nine two is the reliability okay and if I want to uh, convert into failure probability you know that uh, reliability is equal to 1 minus failure probability or failure probability is equal to 1 minus reliability so uh, 1 minus RST 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 so this is the 
this is the uh, failure probability of the wall considering the data that we have taken from the system and the mathematical model uh, we are giving here for the series system. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let us see, the, uh, in this uh, uh, lecture what we have covered, just I have a recap of this uh, or overview of this, uh, we provided a, a sort of a definition of uh, system or what system means and how a, a system is uh, um, uh, connected to the plant. That means many systems will make a plant and uh, there also we have two types of system, process system, safety system, okay. Process systems are required for continuous operation to ensure the throughput or the output of the plant while yes, safety systems remain standby and poised. If any undesired event occurs, then the control sends signal to the safety system and they keep, they come in and ensure plant safety uh, and finally, um, uh, so we have saved an accident because of safety system availability. So plant gets into, gets back into the operation, uh, okay. Then, uh, then we have given a background of series system. Uh, we try to understand, of course, we have taken here very simple model with two blocks and all, but then the philosophy remains same for the analysis. RDV for uh, series system, uh, when we say as an example, uh, the procedure remains very simple and elegant, you know. Uh, these estimates are opt optimistic. So, at the end of this lecture, I would say what I have estimated uh, quantitatively was very optimistic estimate because there are two walls, they are connected in series. If I, I induce any co common cause failure component to it, the reliability will be that will be uh, estimate will be driven by the common cause failure which will be overshadowing the individual component failure probability and, de and definitely the uh, if you do not consider I think that example I will take in the next slide. So thank you very much and uh, let us meet in the next lecture.